Hi everyone and welcome to another screencast. I'm your host Mohamed Azam and in this particular screencast I will explain to you the new feature of ASP.NET MVC 3 it's called remote validation. The remote validation basically allows you to call your action uh, or the controller action in a very easy way using the client-side script and it can return you any result that you want. Uh, mostly if you have an idea like if you can where you can use it is like if you have a form with a username availability and you want to type the name of the or the username that you want for yourself and when you tab out or the, or the blur event is fired and you can actually call a controller's action at that time which will go and query the database and it will find out if the username has already been taken if it's taken then you can do different things you can return false or anything that you like so we're going to do the same thing. The first and the most important thing is that you must include the script libraries. If you don't include that, then uh, it will definitely not work. So we have a jQuery library over here. We have a validate, which is the jQuery.validate.min, and then we have a jQuery.unobstrue.min. Okay, I cannot really pronounce that for some reason. Um, all these libraries are actually contained in the script folder. If you can see, you just make an empty project of an ASP.NET-MVC3 template, and you will find all of them included in the script folder. Okay, so I have my index view, okay, which uh, kind of like says, okay, I need to take a registration view model, but we don't have a registration view model. So let's go ahead and create a simple, very simple class that will represent our registration view model. The only thing it will contain will be the username. So I'm just going to say registration view model. It's a simple class. It's a view model class which represents our view. And I'm going to make a property which is string username get set. It's a very simple property as you can see. And I will decorate it with the required attribute which means that this field is actually required. If it's not there, I can simply say error message, um, username is required. Okay, the other one is remote. And then I can simply say over here, action. Now this is a new feature, the remote attribute in ASP.NET-MVC3. And you can see that it allows you to say, hey, which action do you want to call? So I'm just gonna say, okay, uh, how about validate username? All right, uh, okay, which controller does it contain? Okay, it's a home controller. And then we can see different things. We can say error message, which is username already exists. Kind of like select a different username. All right, let's build this. All right, and let's go ahead and run this. Now, I usually like to run all my things which I'm testing, especially the client-side stuff in uh, Firefox because it has a fire uh, bug plugin. So I'm just gonna use that. And let's close the Chrome. Chrome also has it, but I, I just like this one, okay? So we do have a username text box over here and we have a register button, all right? So, now what we want to do is we have our registration view model and it says that it's going to call an action on the home controller and the action name is the validate username. We don't really have that particular action implemented. So let's go ahead and do that. Public action result validate username. And we're going to pass in the username. Okay, and we can simply say JSON uh, what is it? Username dot equals. Let's say if the username is equals to this and JSON behavior allow get. So if basically what I'm saying over here is that if the username is Adam Sharp, I'm just going to return you false value. Okay, and false will actually trigger the validation, which means that it's validated to false. Here we go. We build it. Uh, our scripts are in place, our view model is in place, which is validate username is in place. Everything seems to be in the correct order right now. Well, we'll find out if it's in the correct order or not. So let's refresh the page. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, Azam Sharp, I'm trying to register username Azam Sharp, and I will tab out of this, okay? And you will see that the request is actually being made over here, okay? And it kind of like highlights the text box into red saying that, hey, you cannot register username Azam Sharp because it's already been registered. And you can see the response over here in the bottom in Firebug that the response of false is being received. Now you can add, and it's a good idea actually, to you can add a validation uh, helpers like the message helpers and all that validation summary, and it will actually write it on the screen saying that the username has already been taken. Let's actually go ahead and type a different one. Let's type uh, John Doe. Okay, and now you can see that it's uh, basically saying that the response is true, that means that username is available. One of the other things that you will notice that the every time I press any key, it's kind of like firing right now. Now this is a feature, or well, this is, I, I wouldn't say the feature, this is the behavior of the JavaScript.validate, I mean jQuery.validate uh, library, and it fires like every time, okay? So you can check on it, I mean, you surely don't want to fire these calls every time a user enters something in the text box. You surely do not want to do that because I can type like blah 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 and you can see most of my requests are actually failing. So just check it out and let me know if it has a property to uh, only fire it on the blur event. This is the default behavior that I'm uh, showing you right now. Uh, it's pretty much firing every time a click is, I mean every time a button is actually pressed or a inside the text box on key, on key press, it's fired, all right? That's pretty much it, and if you're looking to read an article, you know where to go, it's called the highoncoding.com, that's my website, you can go there, and the article is called Remote Validation and ASP.NET MVC3, and in the article I have explained in great detail pretty much what I've done right now, and I've also, I've also covered that if you are not using uh, ASP.NET how can you perform the remote validation? So this is a code for that. This is all jQuery. It's not that much code and it will have the same result. Um, and then if you are using ASP.NET MVC, pretty much the same thing that we covered right now. So that's pretty much it. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, any comments, you can just post it on the, the YouTube comments. And one good news I heard from uh, YouTube is that now I'm allowed to upload videos that are more than 10 minutes long. So that's a good thing. Uh, I guess I can make longer videos if you like. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for more.